Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about permit required confined spaces, 29 CFR 1910.146. The differentiation between permit required confined spaces and confined spaces. Hi, my name is Frank Corrado from the Center for Safety and Environmental Management, and I wanna talk about 29 CFR 1910.146 permit required confined spaces. A lot of people ask me, what is a confined space? And as I explain it to them, they don't understand how it relates to the federal regulation under OSHA for permit required confined spaces. When I give this small lecture, and it is very condensed, I tell people there are 17 things that you need to know about permit required confined spaces. The first of which is what is a confined space. A confined space has three criteria under the law. The first criteria is that it is designed in such a way that you can whole bodily enter the space. Now there have been plenty of people that have been hurt or killed entering halfway into a confined space that couldn't fit their whole body, and I understand that. But the standard says that you can whole bodily enter. Number two, the standard says that the space was not designed for continuous employee occupancy, meaning it's not a normal place of work. You don't enter a room and sit down and start to work. And to further elaborate and define that, number three is, is that the space has limited means of entry or egress. So you might have a very small opening that you have to contort yourself to get through and get out of. It does not have a man door and you can't just walk in and walk out of the room. So the, the, to further explain those three criteria, number one, number two, and number three, they are all tied together with the word and. Okay, so that's important to understand. Okay, so what is a permit required confined space? Once again, number one, you can whole bodily enter. Number two was not designed for continuous employee occupancy. And number three has limited means of entry or egress. The standard connects each one of those, conjunction, junction, what's your function, with the word and. One, and two, and three. When you understand that you have all of those three criteria for your space, now it's time to consider if it's a permit required confined space. So we're gonna talk about four, five, six, and seven. The next four criteria are what outlines a permit required confined space. So number four, the permit required confined space contains or has the potential to contain a hazardous atmosphere. Now we're gonna talk about that in greater detail later, but that's one of the four criteria. Number five is has the space would have inwardly converging walls such that an entrant becomes trapped and asphyxiates. Now, asphyxiation is different than suffocation and we can talk about that in the next one, number six. Number six says that the space has an engulfment hazard. That engulfment hazard can happen from a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So when you think about being engulfed, you can suffocate or you can actually be asphyxiated from compression. If you would pull your knees really tight into your chest and you'd be in a strange position for a while, you wouldn't be able to clear your lungs. Asphyxiation can be as much as 20 seconds with adrenaline, the most powerful drug known to mankind produced naturally in your own body, or it could be over days of suffering as you continually get compressed and not be able to clear uh, the CO2 in your diaphragm and slowly but surely the muscle constriction, the blood flow, uh, you just shut off and it's, it's a horrible way to go. Number seven confuses a lot of people because when you take a look at number seven, what it says is that any other recognized hazard for a permit required confined space. And people are like, what? But the standard literally puts in quotations the control of hazardous energy. So when you think of the control of hazardous energy, in the regulation, this is a tangential regulation, we're talking about lockout, tag out, block out, blind out, de-energization, isolation, zero energy stating, different types of apparatus. And when you're talking about that, most people say electrical, but you're talking about pneumatic, hydraulic, centrifugal, gravitational, mechanical energy. You can even be talking about like stored heat in a piece of metal, uh, direct or indirect sunlight, ultraviolet rays, uh, chemical energy, biological energy, uh, bacteria, 
bacterial and viral energies. So there are so many different types of ways that you might have to control these things, but the standard recognizes that there may be other concerns. Remember that in four, five, six, and seven, you must consider the conjunction or it's four or five or six or seven that ties together to make you realize, yes, this does qualify under 29 CFR 1910.146 permit required confined spaces. Once you have the first three criterion, any one of the next four can qualify you as a permit required confined space. And your attention to that space has to be focused on the regulation from that point out. Obviously, there's a lot more to talk about with permit required confined spaces. There are 17 things I had told you earlier that you should know about permit required confined spaces under the OSHA law 29 CFR 1910.146. In order to get more information, what I would like you to do is click the link that you see here, go to our website, get a free quote, or call us at 888-701-2736.